What is going on, guys? We are back with another episode of Figuring It Out with myself, David, and... Victoria. What is going on? <laughs> if you guys are first-time listeners or never listened to us before, this is Figuring It Out. We're basically, Victoria and I just kind of go through life experience that we've had, which has not been very much. We're only 25 years old, but we are building really cool things in our lives and trying very hard to make sure that we are on the right path to set ourselves up for success and greatness and all the good things that come with life, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, all of the above. Yeah, all of the above. ABC and all of the above. Um, we are back. Today's episode, we're going to jump into um, having a basically a preparation mindset. And we say preparation, I don't mean going and building a bunker in your backyard and getting ready for the nuclear holocaust. That's not oh what we're God. talking about. Uh, we're just talking about getting ready for, uh, like to do something hard, what the expectations are going into stuff that you are going to be attempting to take on. But just a reminder... Victoria and I are not billionaires and we haven't experienced everything in life. And so we're not experts by any means, but we just get to talk to a large amount of awesome people on a daily basis who are young in age and maybe feel that we would be a little bit more relatable than listening to someone who's like 50 or 60 years old and have hundreds of millions of dollars, which are great to listen to, um, but we're just bringing a different perspective. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. And we're just figuring things out. Um, like David said, we have had a variety of experiences, especially as of late and since our last podcast. Yes. So, um, you know, still continuing to build the gym, had a baby. Um, 2024, January's gone and we're off to a freaking <laughs> fast start, it feels like. January so. <laughs> 2024 was fucking nuts. <laughs> it was nuts. Yeah. We kind of knew that it was going to be, we knew that the first, and this is actually leads, wow, I, I didn't even think about this. See? This leads really well <laughs> into this topic. You're welcome. <laughs> we knew coming into 2024, this is Victoria's idea for a topic, by the way, because she is the magician. Um, we knew coming into 2024, the first six months were going to be, um, I don't want to say a nightmare, not a nightmare. They were going to be extremely like packed with a lot of things going on. Like we knew there were going to be a lot of hoops and hurdles, a lot of stress, a lot of cool things. So we knew the first six months, but January hit us hard. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So, um, can you believe tomorrow was actually supposed to be the due date of the baby? That's wild. Yeah. Oh, he's supposed to be born tomorrow? Tomorrow is his due date. That's wild. <laughs> um, but baby ended up coming three weeks early. Um, David started 75 hard. Um, so like he mentioned, everything is just kind of, there was a lot of things that we went into 2024 go like that needed or that we knew was going to end up happening. And so with that, it took a lot of, I guess, mental preparation and just like a lot of talks about like, okay, if this happens, what are we going to do? If this happens, how are we going to get this done? If this happens, it was like a lot of like discussing, I don't want to say all of the scenarios, but basically things that could happen to make sure that we're prepared for when everything was like setting into place, right? Yeah, I think it's just going in, going into something like in, in I mean, I know self-talk and what do they call it? Um, affirmations. Yeah. Everyone likes to shit on affirmations, but I don't think they're affirmations because we're not like turning on incense and sitting crisscross, drinking the special coffee for three hours, talking to ourselves in a mirror, but like just sitting down or not sitting down, but like before you're going to go into something being like, Hey, this is going to be hard. How am I going to react to situations? What do I expect could go wrong? And then when things that I do not expect go wrong, how am I going to handle those things? Right. Yeah. Having that conversation with yourself, I think is, uh, it's super, super important. <laughs> Little baby's crying. <laughs> One moment. Keep talking. <laughs> um, again, like this, we, we knew that it was going to be tough to try to continue what we're doing with uh, having a baby. And so um, we knew that it, there was going to be hoops and hurdles and things that we were going to have to deal with and learn and navigate. Uh, but nonetheless, it's not uh, faltering or quitting on the things that you set out to do just because some unexpected circumstances come up. So that's really, really important. Victoria really wanted to talk a lot about, we can just like, touch on a couple of key things that we've experienced. Again, the podcast is about things that we've experienced in our own lives and that we can draw value from. So, uh, you know, since January 1st, I've started 75 hard. This is my third time doing it. So it's not like I haven't done it before, but it always is difficult whenever you do it. So I'm doing 75 hard. I think we're at day 34 today or day 35. And then uh, we started, we broke ground on the new gym, which has had a lot of hoops and hurdles. Um, Victoria gave birth early. So we had our son three weeks earlier than expected due date. Um, 
And then now Victoria's getting back into her uh, financial services. So it's just been, you know, she's getting back into work after giving birth and being a healing mom. And so it has been, um, we were not expecting this, all of these things that we expected, we didn't think they were all going to come literally in the first three weeks of January. So, yeah. And so had we had not like talked about the possibility of baby coming early, had we had not talked about um, what things were going to be like during the hospital stay, I think we would have been, it would have been a lot harder to get through these things because of the fact that we would have not been prepared Mm -hmm. and it would have been like a major shit show because it's it's like, now what? Like, you know, I think when we set our, our minds to something like, and you were like set on, on doing 75 hard, even knowing that the baby was going to be coming, Mm -hmm. like it was like, well, it's going to get done no matter what. And then on the other hand, it's like, okay, if I'm in the hospital, depending how long the stay is when we have the baby, like, I know he's going to get to get these things done. So I think it also just played a big part into like no resentment, like just uh, like, as far as like a relationship goes, like it was just better set off, like that we were both on the same page with. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and going into the expectation, at least we can just talk about one by one each each situation. Like with the baby, it was, you know, not only just 75 hard, but we could just talk about the birth in general. Things like going into a, a, a more difficult time was like, you did, you did a lot of research reading books about, you know, what the hospital, what, what it's going to be like when they ask you questions, what are things are going to be administering the baby right after he's born, but more of like the process leading up to it and like, making the decision to do it natural, no epidural, that type of stuff is like, talk a little bit about like your preparation and how you like went into that. Yeah. So the biggest thing was, like you said, I read a lot of books. Um, Obviously I follow a lot of different Instagram pages and have a couple of people who have obviously already like have given birth and have kids. Um, But part of it was just doing my own research and um, looking into the type of birthing experience that I wanted to have and preparing for that. And then let you know about it because in the case that I couldn't speak, obviously, because I was, I'm, my mind is somewhere else birthing a child. You're pooping out a baby. <laughs> um, you are able to advocate for me and then you're prepared to answer those questions in regards to um, what the baby's going to be getting at the end of the day, right? Like while they're cleaning me up, you know, whatever, whatever, mm-hmm. it's, whatever it may be. Um, and so part of it was like, okay, looking into... Um, skin to skin contact directly after looking into, are they going to get a, a hep B shot right away? Are they going to get uh, eye ointment right away? So it's like all these little things that you don't really think about, like in the grand scheme of things, but when the time gets there, like having looked that up, it, I think it made that experience go the way that I wanted to. Um, especially because like you had mentioned, I didn't want to get an epidural, um, wanted to do it as natural as possible. Right. Um, And so it's like when people were, I don't want to say like trying to intervene, but it was like, just get her the epidural, just ask them for the epidural. It Mm -hmm. was like, no, she doesn't want it. Like, you know, it's just being that advocate. Um, But also that we were going into it with like, I had a set plan and it was obviously, I had a plan to obviously do natural. I had wanted to do a water birth originally. That didn't go as planned just because of the way things were going and like the contractions and whatnot. I didn't even want to. And it came early, so you weren't expecting. Right. So I didn't really get to look into all that that much that I wanted to. Um, But it was trying to maneuver the best way possible. Like you can try to plan for this perfect birthing experience. And I mean, without getting into too much detail, even then it was still kind of like a hassle because they put me in five different positions to give birth. Nothing was working. They ended up having to use forceps. So, you know, it was very, uh, I try to prepare and plan as much as possible, but even still like things that I did want to not get done, didn't. And things that I wanted to get done did, but it was just kind of like up in the air because we weren't expecting it to be so soon. Yeah. It's going into it knowing, like you said, like, okay, this is going to be, uh, I mean, giving birth, let's be honest here. if, If you have kids, if you don't, but like, it's a stressful situation. Yeah. Like as soon as you get into the hospital, it's stressful. And so like, not only because you're having to worry about just the hospital shit in general, but then like you're having contractions. Yeah. And and, no, go ahead. And it was just earlier than expected. Mm -hmm. Like we had our hospital bags and everything ready. Those were prepared, ready to go, but we weren't expecting to 
get to the gym and then be like, okay, let's go to the hospital because I think it's coming. And now we have to figure out what's going to happen with the dogs, you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like when your coach is like, all right, we're starting a cut tomorrow. And it's like, well, you have never told me about this and you don't like have time to mentally prepare to like eat less food and to be ready for like a cut or a, being in a calorie deficit. It's the same thing, which is like, you can be ready all you want, but like it, because it came early, that made the stress a little bit more. But that's why going into it with like a mental with mental preparation is really important because she did prep me on all the things. Like um, there was like three or four times where nurse, my mom, uh, no, your mom didn't really ask, but my mom did ask, and a couple of the nurses. Like, you sure she doesn't want to nap You sure she? And and Victoria's like in the middle of like not trying to die, so she's like over because she's cramping her life away having contractions, and so it's my decision to make that stuff. And I just remember going into it is like, we're going to prepare ourselves that this is going to be tough. The conversations that Victoria and I had beforehand was, this is going to be tough. This is going to suck. It's going to be hard. This is probably going to be the worst pains you've ever had. However, there are billions, not not millions, billions of women who have done this before without epidurals in the entire existence of humans. This is possible. You're able to do it. You're stronger than this. It's only for a very small, limited amount of time, couple of hours, you can get through this. And so because of that, like she prepared herself mentally for that. And I prepared myself that it was going to be tough to watch her go through it. It was one of those, like I was able to efficiently coach her through her contractions and help her. And she was able to deal with the pain. And then sure enough, after the post, uh, post uh, delivery, we're in the post delivery room and she's like, I don't even really remember what the pains were like, because as soon as it's done, right, we always forget, like, I can't remember what I felt like when I blew out my knee or I had surgeries. Like you can't, you, you can't think of those pains because you quickly forget those. And so it's a very small amount of mental, um, strain, but the preparation helps you for that. And afterwards looking back, no matter what situation you're ever in, it's always easier to look back on something. Right. And, and it's, it's with the idea that, like you said, it's, it wasn't going to last forever. And at the end of the day, like you, you're doing this to bring a, a life into the world. And so it's like, it's not like you're doing it just to do it and just to be in pain. Like, no, there is like a reason for it. And yeah, looking back at it, I don't remember like what it felt like pain wise. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like, was it uncomfortable after? Yeah. But I don't remember the pain and that's, I guess that's the beauty of it, I guess, yeah. you know, is the best way of putting it. Um, but in, tra in, in relation to that too, it's like now post delivery, Right. Like having the baby here, it's again, preparing that we were going to have longer nights. We were going to mm -hmm. have. Oh yeah. That's a really good transition. Like we were going to have longer nights waking up in the middle of the night. Now, if we're being completely honest here, I would have to say that we're pretty blessed because we're still getting between five and a half to like almost seven and a half hours of sleep net right now. Right. Yeah. He's a pretty good baby. So, but it was going into the mindset like, yeah, these first few months are going to be a little tough. Um, I'll take the responsibility of, you know, making sure he's getting fed and changed and then you just helping where it needs to be and I'll wake you up and just being okay with that and understanding that, you know, it was going to be a little tough. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think going into it made it a lot easier going into it with low expectations of like, Hey, we know this could be, this could be a demon child and we could end up having to wake up like 14 times a night and we weren't going to get any sleep. Um, and you know, and then anything past that, it blows our expectations out of the water, but I think it's having that mental preparation. And I, th I think just honestly, guys, whatever it's a, whether it's a, with a business or the relationship, it's just having an actual physical conversation makes everything better. <laughs> Little man's crying again. <laughs> She's, I know he does want to be on camera. Um, he loves to be held. So, um, I think that's the biggest thing is like literally having a conversation with yourself or with your significant other saying, this is going to be hard. We are going to make it through it. It's kind of like when people say like when you, when you create goals, write them down on paper. So put them into action. Um, it's the same thing is like, don't just think about, you know, is this going to be tough? Don't guess. Talk to your partner and say, Hey, this is going to be hard. We're going to get through this. Many people have done this before. And so by having that conversation prepares you uh, for the worst basically. And so when, Mr. Arlo wakes us up in the middle of the night, you know, like he did last night, he was crying and Victoria was nursing him. And then I woke up, I think it was like four in the morning. Um, it wasn't one of those like, Oh my God, he woke me up again. It was just one of those like, Oh, his pastor fell, fell out. Um, it was just one of those, like, this is part of the game. Like this is, this is what we prepared for. This is what we knew was going to happen. And so because of that, you know, everything, you know, everything worked out the way it did. So, um, I think, I think just having the conversation really makes all the difference. Yeah. And I think, um, a good transition to this was, I think on your side of thing and your perspective is 
uh, being able to continue with doing 75 hard despite like uh, people saying like, you're really going to do that? Like you're about to have a baby. Like what about, you know, X, Y, Z? What if this happens and are you going to get it done? And <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, that's another thing is it's like, don't listen to what people tell you when it comes to when, if you want to accomplish something hard or do something hard, everyone's going to have something negative to say about it, no matter what, like, it's just kind of how it is. And so we went into it knowing, cause I decided like, we're, I'm going to start 75 hard on January 1st. It's because whenever we go into some really difficult and trying times, I've noticed that when I do 75 hard in those times, it always helps. We did it when we first opened the gym. We did it when we were getting ready for the wedding and we had the business during COVID. And then, um, we obviously I want to do it now when, when I knew that we were going to be opening a new gym and having the baby, I knew that it would help me just kind of keep me going and keep me aligned and keep me productive, which it like, has a thousand fold. Um, and because of that, I think that I'm handling stress a lot better than I did before. Um, just like on my day to day basis, like I'm getting things done. I'm still working forward, even if stressful things are happening around me. Um, and so we went into it and, and again, the conversation is really important because I told Victoria like, Hey, I'm going to do this. Uh, it doesn't matter if I have a baby, I'm going to work out at the hospital. I'm going to work out, you know, I'm going to get my outdoor workout in no matter what. <laughs> and Victoria was okay with that. And so, um, it's having the conversation and um, making sure that you understand what you're getting yourself into. That's really, really, really important. Yeah. Um, obviously, like a lot of people were asking my perspective, like, oh, like, what if you're, you know, in birth or in labor or something, ha you know, whatever, and he has to go do his outdoor cardio or he has to go do a work. And I'm like, OK, well, you know, at that, at that point, it's preparing the day and preparing you know, that set moment or that time to make sure like that things were happening. Like when, before we went to the gym, he was on his outdoor cardio, like walking and I texted him. No, before we went to the hospital. Oh, the, the gym. oh yeah. Before yeah. we went to the hospital, well, before we went to the gym, yeah, um, we were here at the house though. Cause it was like six in the morning and he had went on his outdoor cardio and I had shot him a text basically saying like, Hey, don't freak out, but <laughs> don't tell anyone those words. <laughs> I said, but like this pain isn't letting up or something, you know, I'll see you when you get back or whatever. And, um, and, I think she's, and she's not one to text me and stuff like that. So like when she did, I was like, Oh, that probably means like, and we knew how big he was. And so it was one of those like, Oh, well, I guess it's time. <laughs> but it was again, okay. Like I wasn't going to be like, Hey, you need to come over here right now. Finish your outdoor cardio. It's like, okay, no, let's finish the cardio because if this happens then all he's going to have to get done for the rest of the day is his other four remaining tasks or whatever, and then go work out. So it's also just, it's preparing for the moment, I guess. And like the long, like, I guess the bigger scheme of things but it's also like making sure your days are like prepared mm -hmm. um so that in the case that these happen a lot sooner than expected you're like you're good to go you know yeah if, if you're gonna take on a task whether it might be opening a business or it might be you know uh let's just say prepping for you know let's say you're gonna get married whatever it might be like doing the things every day knowing like okay if i get this done every day i'm gonna be on a productive way to, to like, complete this task so that's one thing that we did go into is like i when going into 75 hard her and i talked about okay well we'll let's just say on the busiest craziest baby delivery day when arlo comes like what is going to be the best strategy and that way i can just start that on day one so that way if it does happen and sure enough it did happen which was get the outdoor cardio done early in the morning so that when we get there we could i could easily i could either work out in the room i could do like a 45 minute whether it's like a fucking ab workout or whatever it might be a body weight workout so get that outdoor cardio done in the morning as soon as possible make sure to keep drinking water so i don't have to worry about that and just make sure you bring your book with like have your book packed in your bag and um because of that, the first thing I did that morning, I was just, you know, I was just doing my daily routine every single day. And I just happened to be out almost done with cardio because I left at like 545. And then sure enough, you know, by the time that I got done, Victoria was having your contractions. So it worked out really well because we set a game plan and we knew what was going to prepare ourselves to get through having the baby and doing 75 hard together and not letting the excuse of, oh, well, because it get think about that. Like think about like <laughs> probably one of the biggest moments in your life is having a child. And so it would be very easy to be like, I'll just start over. And you know, when we get home from the hospital in a week, yeah, you know, especially when it came down to food. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you, you have to, it's one of those, like, you have to be like when we ordered food from the hospital or, well, first off we had, I had meals, but before we left the house, I was like, I'm taking my meals with me. If they don't have a microwave, I'm going to fucking eat it cold. It doesn't matter. But, but even then we were there, they, you know, they have a plethora, plethora of food to get you, but I had chicken breast and fucking, I think it was chicken breast and white rice they had and egg whites. And that's all I ate. It is what it is. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so I laugh because um, one of the times we were ordering and I ordered like two portions or three portions of chicken breast and they called me saying, um, typically it's only for one person or something. Yeah, they totally, they totally could tell that they were or- she was ordering all this chicken for me. But they had the macros on like for this dietary stuff. Either way, they had everything was set and planned out and, and it ended up working out, you know, thank goodness. But uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. Uh, I, I think it's a good. It's a good lesson of um, preparation. Is uh, it's you know when you prepare, it, it really does set you on the right track for success. Um, and then you know there's there's things that you we can talk about um, preparing for the unexpected. And so I mean, obviously, an example of that is Arlo came early. That was unexpected. But um, we can transition now into the gym. The new gym is like we've had to deal with. We knew, and, and Victoria has held me very accountable to this, which is really good. And this is why having the conversations with your, whether it's a friend or significant other, having the conversation with someone you're close with when you're going to go in to do something hard is so important is because we talked, we sat down in December, November, actually it was before we signed the lease. And we said, this is going to be really fucking difficult. It's going to be really fucking expensive. There's going to be things that come up. We're going to have a baby. Like the first six months of January is going to be a monster. And so we knew, okay, well, well, you prepared to basically like zero our accounts out. Like, yeah, we're prepared for that because we're putting it all on the line. And so, but it's a lot easier said than done. So when those situations come around, because you did have those conversations, it's not like you get blindsided. Like if you don't go, if you don't, if you just keep in your mind and you don't say anything to anybody about it and the situation comes up, you're going to think, fuck, I didn't actually think this was going to happen. But when you lay it on the line, you talk about it and you say it, then it's more like it's real when it comes. So when it comes, it's like, it's not that big of a deal because you guys have already talked about it. So, you know, we've already, we've already faced, we're facing one right now. You know, we faced probably four major roadblocks with the building already. And that had been a make or break for the project. And we're going through another one right now, which I am, you know, I am certain that we're going to get through it one way or another. We've already put too much effort and time into this building, but, um, it's the, like, if this was David in 2020 or 2019, I would have been freaking the fuck out, like freaking out. I would have been like all day stressed. I can't get work done. I would have gone into my shell. I wouldn't have been productive. I just would have been, I honestly just would have been a straight up little pussy about it. But now it's more like. Okay, well, and and this only takes repetition. It takes reps of getting hit in the balls over and over again through the last five years of business to like feel better about this stuff. But it's me telling Victoria, hey, when shit gets hard, you're going to have to keep me accountable. And and she has done that. Yeah, and it's like you said, it's like we talked about these things. We talked about um, the possibility of things coming out to be more expensive than what we estimated them to be. Things coming out to take a little bit longer, things coming out to um, be more difficult and not be smooth sailing, you know, especially having opened our original or our current location right now is it's it's not going to be it's not going to be smooth and things are going to happen. And when those roadblocks did hit, yeah, they hit hard, but they didn't hit as hard because we anticipated. I don't want to say we anticipate something always going wrong, but you just be prepared with the. Uh, with the idea that it's like I said earlier, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, I think I think just going into any hard situation, I think knowing that something's going to go wrong and everything. For example, the baby, you know, he had his umbilical cord wrapped around his neck, and so that made that a little bit more stressful. Or, you know, with the building, it's like, hey, we anticipate we're going to open this bitch up, and there's going to be issues. Sure enough, there was issues, and some of them were very expensive issues. And so, um, going into it with that mindset just makes it a little bit easier to. Uh, prepare mentally and then prepare financially because it definitely made us be more strict on our decisions towards the end of the year with buying, buying certain things and doing certain, you know, doing certain stuff, which kind of goes into our last episode with holiday obligations of, you know, like make sure you're financially prepared before you spend on other things. And so, um, you know, having those conversations make those things uh, more, more easy to uh, be able to take on for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. That was good. I have nothing else to say. I mean, that's basically the gist of it, right? Is like you repair as much as possible for the events that you're expecting to happen and you repair as much as possible for the events that could possibly unexpectedly happen. Yeah. And and having the mindset 
that some, some really like what, it doesn't really matter anything, but life things are going to get in the way. Dude, I, we got, I got into rear end. I got in a car accident the other day. Like I was not expecting that to happen. Right. Well, that definitely changed my, my shift of training for at least for a week or two, uh, with a concussion and an X train. So it's like one of those things where, uh, that was, that was not on the playing no. cards. Like that was not on the playing cards at all. So that, and that had nothing to do with Victoria and I didn't have a conversation about that. <laughs> we couldn't have predicted that, but having the conversation of like, no matter what we set out to do these things, we are going to make them happen no matter what. And so that makes a, that makes it a very, um, I don't say it makes it easy, but it makes it a lot more manageable to go through hard shit when you sit down and you say, I'm going to do this thing. And then think about all the things that could go wrong and be like, these things are, and then just assume they're going to go wrong. Assume you're going to have issues. And then that way it's a lot easier to pivot and to change and to um, adhere to any changes you need to make to get to that end goal. Yeah. And then if they don't, if there's no issues or nothing arises and it's like, okay, you could breathe a little bit. Like it's good. Well, dude, you surpassed <laughs> expectations. Yeah. Just like this little guy. Shout out to Arlo, dude, for not being a demon. He's, you know, he's a little angel, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, he's hanging out. He's super happy. Knocked out. <laughs> yeah, he just wanted to be held. I know for people who can't see this right now and they're just listening. No, big yawn. Yeah. Big yawn. He doesn't like me holding him because my hands get really cold and he gets upset because my hands are cold. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, other than that, I think that that's probably just, I mean, if you want to recap like the biggest things or if you feel like we recap. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's that's really it, guys, is, is when you go into something difficult or when you're preparing to go into something difficult, um, obviously... You can't rely on accountability from other people all the time, but even if you just sit down, let's just say with the mom, a dad, an uncle, you know, a good friend and have a, a conversation with them and just say, Hey, I just need you to listen to me. I think this stuff's going to be hard. I just want you to talk. I want to talk through it with you, but having those conversations, um, are, or even do just fucking take your phone out and record with yourself. And when you record yourself saying, this is going to be hard, you know, this is going to be difficult. These are things I think I'm going to run into. You could probably look back on that while you're in the middle of that thing, you know, later down the line. And you're like, and you look back at that video and think, holy shit, I did say this was going to be hard. And it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to handle that stuff. So yeah, yeah. that was a good one. That's good. That's a good idea you had. That's good. I like that topic. <laughs> Again, guys, these topics are just things that we run into on a daily basis. We are not geniuses by any means. And so um, our topics are, are heavily related around just the experiences that we've had. Um, we can't relate to, you know, we, we don't, we don't run a nine or eight figure business. And so we can't be like, these are the things that we do in our business and how we lead teams. Like we have one full-time team member and, uh, Victoria has her financial services, which don't have, uh, you know, it's not like a massive team of people. And so we can't get out here and give you guys major leadership skills because, well, we're not really there yet. So we're just going off of the things that, you know, how we're doing with the experiences that we have. Yeah. Like we always say, we're just, you know just trying to figure things out along the way and then just bring you guys along with us and see if you guys have any uh, relatable points that, you know, you can benefit from, from this or if not, and maybe you have like different insight or different perspective, obviously we'd love to hear it. And, you know, maybe just see how you guys go about your preparation mindset. Um, or if you guys want to just hear us talk about something else that we haven't touched on already, I would just say reach out to us. Yeah, leave a comment on the on the YouTube or on podcast, whatever it is, and like let us know if there's anything that you're going through because I'm I'm pretty sure that the things that everyone has gone through, other people have gone through as well, and so we can talk a little bit about maybe how we would deal with that situation, or how we have similar situations that we've dealt with before because we have been through a good amount of uh, shittiness in our lives, so. We could talk a little bit about how we've navigated some similar scenarios. Or even if you just need an extra accountability person to reach out to because you feel like you don't have a support system or anything, just shoot us a message and that way we could try to hold you as much as accountable as possible. Like if you just started 75 hard, just be like, hey, I just started, started 75 hard. And maybe next week we'll check in and be like, hey, how's 75 hard going? Yeah. You know, or if you end up posting a story that you're drinking, be like, hey, what happened? <laughs> And yeah, or you just stop posting in general. Exactly. Yeah. Cool, guys. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you uh, for listening along. I know these podcasts, we try to keep under 30 minutes, which we successfully did today. So if you guys have uh, any questions, comments, concerns, you can fuck right off. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, seriously, guys, let us know if you have any feedback or anything you guys want to hear. But we appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I hope your first month of the year went well. Yeah. If not... To February you go. I guess. <laughs> it's too late. Peace. <laughs>